Welcome once again to Noir Alley. I'm Eddie Muller, back from my summer under the stars hiatus. I'll be here every weekend through the rest of the year, bringing you dark and tawdry tales of danger and despair. Just the ticket to add cinematic spice to the end of your week. We're jumping back into it with the Noir Alley debut of a genuine auteur, one you will never confuse with Orson Welles. From 1957, it's Hit and Run, produced, written, directed, and starring Hugo Haas. Headlining the show is his muse, voluptuous blonde bombshell Cleo Moore, seen here earlier this year in Overexposed. This is the last of seven movies more made with Hugo Haas during a five-year blitz in the 1950s. Haas's penchant for low-budget, sex-fueled pot boilers garnered him a reputation as a purveyor of trashy cinema. That brand, unfortunately, obscures one of the more fascinating tales of a multifaceted European emigre working in the American movie business. In the 1930s, Haas had been a popular and well-respected actor and director in his native Czechoslovakia, working in both theater and films. In 1937, he produced, wrote, directed, and starred in Skeleton on Horseback, a daring tale about the scourge of fascist nationalism. When the neighboring Nazis occupied Czechoslovakia in 1938, Haas, like many of his Jewish compatriots in the arts, fled his homeland to avoid persecution. He and his wife, Bibi, eventually settled in America, where he eked out a sporadic livelihood as a featured player on the New York stage, despite speaking barely any English. He made the move to Hollywood after learning that there was work for foreign actors, mostly portraying the Nazis from whom they fled. It was tough going for the 40-something-year-old Haas, who didn't have the leading man charisma of a Paul Heinrich or the broad eccentricity of character actors like Peter Lorre or Fritz Kortner. He traded on his all-purpose ethnicity in a couple of dozen films in the 40s without ever really establishing a foothold in the business. In the early 50s, however, the studio system became more open to independently made films, and Haas decided to take a huge gamble. He invested his life savings, $85,000 to make a film of the 1926 novel Watchmen 47, written by fellow Czech Josef Kopta. The film, retitled Pickup, was bought and released by Columbia Pictures, and its unexpected success ignited a run of low-budget noir-stained melodramas, most of them produced, written, directed, and starring Hugo Haas. In an interview with the New York Times in 1951, Haas asked rhetorically, why make a bad film for a lot of money when you can make good pictures for little money? Good, of course, is a relative term. Within the business, a good film is one that turns a profit. Critics had a different view, ripping Haas's films as cheap and tawdry and at times almost amateurish. But as long as he kept budgets low and sex appeal high, Haas was able to keep total control and make a living on his own terms. In 1952, he cast one-time RKO bit player Cleo Moore as the star of Strange Fascination, beginning a seven-film collaboration that would forge the legacy of both the creator and his muse. Today's film features a setup dear to Haas and film noir, a love triangle that turns deadly with Vince Edwards, fresh off Stanley Kubrick's The Killing, as the triangle's third vertex. Haas once said, other people specialize in musicals or westerns. I like to specialize in triangle stories because they feature the vagaries of human nature and the ironies of circumstance. This one is based on a story credited to Herbert O. Phillips, who in reality was German-born production designer Herbert Lipschitz, an old colleague of Haas's. Of course, the final script is by Haas himself. It's essentially a carbon copy of The Postman Always Rings Twice, except for an outrageous plot twist at the midway point. All I can say is, if you like car wrecks, you are going to love Hit and Run. Several of Hugo Haas's films end with him delivering a jokey line to the audience, 
winking at them not to take any of it seriously, as if there was any chance of it with this plot and these performances. And I wasn't kidding when I noted earlier the script's similarities to The Postman Always Rings Twice. The statuesque lion tamer, played by pinup model Dolores Reed, was taken straight from James M. Cain's 1934 novel. Audrey Totter played her in the 1946 film, Minus the Circus, and Angelica Houston played her with Cats in the 1981 version. Dolores Reed had only one other feature film role as an Amazonian alien in 1962's Invasion of the Star Creatures. Reed's life was the real noir story. Her husband was busted in 1962 for robbing an armored car, and Reed died the following year of a morphine overdose. Hit and Run was the final film of Cleo Moore's career. Over the previous five years, she had starred in nine pictures, seven of them Hugo Haas productions. In all but one, he was her co-star. If Cleo's performance seemed a little lethargic, maybe it's because she'd played the same character in every one. Moore always joked that after retiring from the picture business, she'd return to her native Louisiana and run for governor. Instead, she married real estate tycoon Herbert Heftler and lived the rest of her life on his sprawling estate in Beverly Hills. Unfortunately, the rest of her life turned out to be brief. Moore died in her sleep at only 43 years of age. Like an actress who gets typecast, Hugo Haas found out that once he'd scored a hit with his triangle melodramas, it was hard to get funding for anything else. Near the end of the decade, he wrote to a friend back in Czechoslovakia, I've had many plans, but everything has been screwed up. Films today are made only for morons and 14-year-old children, either fantasies about the moon and planets, detective rubbish, or films about the boogeyman. That's not a joke, he said. It's a fact. Ah, uh, Hugo, some things never change. Yet, following the release of Hit and Run, Haas was given a prestige project to direct a non-sensationalized drama of clinical personality disorder called Lizzie, starring three-time Oscar nominee Eleanor Parker. This wasn't a Hugo Haas does-it-all production. It was made by Kirk Douglas's Bryna Productions, based on a popular novel by Shirley Jackson. Haas gave it his best, eliminating the winks and nudges of his low-budget affairs, but the film was a box office failure, completely overshadowed by The Three Faces of Eve, which would win Joanne Woodward a Best Actress Oscar. Haas directed a cast of well-known actors, including Julie London and Nat King Cole, in 1959's Night of the Quarter Moon, a provocative story of interracial marriage distributed by MGM that was eight years ahead of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. It was not well received, and after suffering disappointments with two more independently made pictures, Haas moved to Vienna, where he died in 1968. It's easy to mock Hugo Haas's films and his predilection for casting himself opposite women a fraction of his age, but I admire the guy for finding a way to make movies in a foreign country in a second language and on his own terms at a time when the average budget for a Hollywood film was one and a half million dollars and no one started shooting without a distribution deal in place, Haas made pictures for less than a hundred grand and only sold the movies after they were finished so no studios or investors could meddle in their creation. Using his own dough, Haas produced 12 films in just over 10 years, most of which turned to tidy profit. No masterpieces, that's for sure, but the man did leave a small, indelible mark on movie history. Next week, I'll be back with another triangle story, one bearing a slightly higher pedigree. It's a foreign film. Don't panic, you subtitle haters. It's from England. The always amusing Robert Newton plays a cuckolded husband plotting diabolical revenge in the 1949 film Obsession, also known as The Hidden Room. It's both suspenseful and mordantly funny. Always a good combo in my book. I'm sure many of you need no further prompting from me to report what you thought of Hit and Run on the Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed. So until next week, see you in the shadows. <laughs>